Hello everyone, Chris Peterson here. I wanted to bring you another chess commentary. Um, as part of my New Year's resolution, um, I want to continue working on my YouTube channel. My channel has had some mild success. I have over 400 subscribers and over 100,000 views, so thanks to you guys for that. Um, I want to keep doing analysis of my games as well as continue the endgame tricks videos. Uh, I know I've made these plans in the past, but I hope to put more effort into it now. My last video uh, was over six months ago, and the last full game analysis was over like eight months ago. Uh, but uh, analyzing my tournament games in this medium has helped me come become a better chess player uh, over the board because I put more effort into studying and analyzing my games. So I think I'll focus on analyzing my tournament games and working on those uh, endgame trick videos. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into this game. Uh, this was my first game that I played in uh, 2014. Uh, my opponent this game is Jude Quintana. He is a local B player. Um, he's very dangerous over the board because he moves very methodically. Um, he doesn't have much tournament experience, so um, he's very underrated because he hasn't played in enough tournaments for his rating to catch up to him. So uh, he's not an opponent that you can take lightly because he doesn't fall for many uh, tricks. Uh, it's very difficult to sneak a tactic under his nose. Um, so solid play with bold thematic positional play is the simplest way to beat him. Um, so he he's a regular attendee of blitz tournaments held on the weekends down in Denver. Um, so I've played him uh, several times before. We've had plenty of encounters. Uh, but this is our first rated tournament game. Uh, so I went knight f3, uh, d5, d4, e6, g3. And uh, one of Colorado's newest masters, um, although he recently moved to Hawaii, uh, played the Catalan religiously. I have found it to be useful um, in maintaining what's initial advantage against just about any opponent. Um, so I've been playing it more and more, and I've found myself liking the resulting positions um, incrementally more each time. Uh, so knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castles, castles, c4. So now it's officially a closed Catalan position. Uh, knight bd d7, b3. Um, so me not being a diehard opening theoretician, I can't tell you how popular or good this move is. Uh, I simply want to fianchetto my dark squid bishop. Just, I just want to go there. Um, I mean my play is going to be slow, but hopefully it'll be powerful. Uh, c5 is a good move, it's just challenging the center. There's no reason to let white keep this gigantic center open um, while on the board. Uh, so bishop b2, continuing with my play. Um, positionally, this isn't a great move, as it allows black to isolate white's c-pawn um, without much compensation. Uh, maybe maybe better would have been uh, c takes d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, uh, e4, um, and something like this, and uh, white has gained a lot of space in the center and he's starting to uh, seize the initiative as well. Uh, one thing to note is if he goes uh, e takes d5, um, there's no danger of having an isolated pawn, so I can just uh, just continue developing normally with like knight c3 and uh, maybe bishop e2. So. Uh, but instead I just went bishop b2, and um, this allows black to isolate my um, isolate my c-pawn. Uh, so d takes c4, b takes c4, c d4. And now my c-pawn is completely isolated. Uh, knight d4, and now knight c5. So black has found a nice home for his knight um, on c5, and it, it'll be a thorn in white's side as it cannot easily be dislodged. Uh, so I just continued de developing ninety two, and now uh, Jude makes his first real mistake. Um, he should probably just push e five here. 
Um, so, well, he can go bishop d7 also. e5 is also an okay move. Um, but uh, if he doesn't go bishop d7 now um, and then continue with his um, positional play, then he's going to find himself kind of uh, bottled up, which would be bad. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to go to c6 right away, but the idea is to go to c6 and challenge this uh, this long diagonal here. Um, so let's just see if bishop d7... Um, I mean, there's not too much to analyze here because it's kind of a, a slow positional thing. Um, but for example, if I go queen c2, uh, then bishop a4 maybe, uh, just to gain a tempo there. Uh, then something like this. <coughs> and it's going to be... Um, Black's play is not going to be stuck behind any material. Um, so let's go back. So instead of doing that, he went queen d7, which is uh, a dubious move, because Black is stifling his own development. Um, and he said after the game he wanted to go queen a4, but um, that's kind of inconsequential, because I can always plug it up with putting something on b3. Um, but I didn't even want to give him uh, a4, or a4 for his queen, so I just went a4. And uh, this is going to stifle his queen side even more. And uh, maybe this isn't the most accurate way to continue, but um, I'm just trying to put as much uh, positional pressure on, on him as possible. Uh, so, just as an example, um, if we go into this... Um, I mean, white has a, a lot of activity, and his pieces are placed really strongly. Um, there's complete domination with these bishops. Um, and, I mean, white should just be better here despite the uh, isolated pawn. Well, um, yeah, so... So, um, after a4, uh, Jude could have played e5. And this this is why um, my a4 move wasn't positionally accurate because now Jude's going to gain a lot of space in the center and without losing any tempi. Uh, so if I back the knight up now e5 and if I go back suddenly uh, the scope of of this bishop here is um, a lot more. So he's got a lot more scope with that bishop and um, I mean maybe it can find a home on e6 or 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 swing around to uh, to that square, although that square is not that great. Um, but it, it, it's certainly better than being stuck on c8. Um, so instead, he played a6, and yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the point of a6 was. Maybe just to prevent knight b5. Uh, maybe to prepare b5 later on. But those aren't really. Um, well, knight b5 was never really my plan, and uh, b5 is going to be stuck for uh, at least two more moves. So, uh, so I went queen c2, um, taking stock of the position really quick. Uh, white has an isolated pawn on c4, but that is essentially his only problem. Uh, during his... Um, well, Black, however, still has several moves left to complete his development. Um, this rook and this bishop are completely tied down for now. Um, and during his contortions to try to unsticky his position, White will have time to launch an attack on on Black's king, um, or uh, trade off trade off Black's uh, well placed knight on c5, um, and maybe even fix the queenside pawn structure. So here, um, Jude should probably just go queen c7 and admit that he made a mistake by putting the queen on d7. Because um, that'll allow the black bishop to uh, contest this diagonal. Um, but uh, instead, he plays uh, rook a7. And I understand the idea behind rook a7. Uh, it's to allow uh, b6 and bishop b7. But the simpler way to do it would have just been rook b8 um, because the rook's not doing anything on a7 and I have an opportunity here to prevent uh, b6 completely. Uh, so I played a5 
and this just stops pawn to b6 in its tracks because uh, pawn takes b6 and the rook is going to be trapped. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Jude went rook to d8, uh, a good move putting the rook on the open file. I just went rook f to d1, lining up against uh, contesting the open file, I guess, um, and enjoying the the benefit of my connected rooks and my queenside space. Um, White's White's going to be building up a lot of pressure in the center, so that's going to be uh, a big plus for White. So isolated pawns are bad uh, if you can uh, get pieces traded off and target the pawn, but in this case, Black's going to have a really hard time attacking the pawn. Um, I don't even see how he can attack it more than once, and the one way that he can attack it is uh, is maybe putting this knight to here, and that's I mean that's not even a, a threat ever because I, I already have two two defenders on the c four the c four pawn, so uh, so the isolated pawn here f uh, on c four is never really a problem, so. Uh, Jude went queen c7. That's just to get off the uh, the X-ray attack from the rook. And here, I I need to be honest. I I wasn't sure how to continue. Uh, I didn't want to move any of my pieces and allow Black a freeing trade. Uh, the move that I played, however, allows Black to free his position considerably. Um, perhaps what I should have played is knight two to b3, and. Uh, this is just to trade off that powerful uh, knight c5. Uh, it does allow black to occupy c5 with another piece, but it trades off uh, white's worst piece for black's best piece. So if you're ever stuck for what to do, identify your worst piece and try to trade it off, uh, or find a better place for it. Uh, the better the piece you can exchange it for, the more you'll you will improve your position. So. Um, I think in this position, white has a, a very clear advantage, so, uh, and the computer seems to agree, so that's good. Um, so instead of that, I played e3, and uh, this allows e5 again. Uh, so if he goes e5, um, I mean, for the same reason as before, e5 is the correct move. White, black gains space in the center, and he gives his light squared bishop some scope. Uh, but instead, he was just happy to go bishop d7 to try to get his uh, bishop off the back rank. And now we can start to see why the rook on a7 is misplaced because it's going to have to go back to b. Uh, it's going to have to go back before it's even in the game. So that's that's interesting. Uh, so I went bishop c3, and my idea here is to free up the a1 rook. Uh, right. Up until then, my rook was tied down to defending the a5 pawn, and um, there's better places for the rook. I mean, rooks do not want to be tied down to pawns, especially when there are juicy backward pawns, like this one, um, and uh, half-open files to, to take over. So uh, black played bishop c6, and this is another uh, pretty big mistake for Jude. Um, He's giving me the two bishops, and since the position is pretty open, the, the bishops will have great utility. Um, the one thing I don't like about playing knight takes bishop is that it frees up his, his a7 rook a little bit, but um, I think the two bishops is worth more than keeping the rook locked up. Uh, bc6. So, uh, so I went rook b to d1, and arguably the a1 rook uh, could have found its way on b1, but I figured a pair of rooks were going to be traded anyway um, after something like uh, rook to b8. Uh, then I figured it wouldn't matter too much. Um, and over t over protecting a5 is okay. It, it's not necessary, but it's okay. Um, so for example, if I went rook a b1, maybe he goes knight, knight c7. But then I can just go knight b3 or something, and I'm I'm probably okay, but um, I don't know. Th they're kind of equivalent, rook db1 and rook ab1. So he goes knight c to d7, then I played knight f3. And 
Uh, so black's weakest points are c6 and b7, right here. Um, I, I have lined up on these pretty extensively. Um, but right now it's kind of plugged up because of the pawn on c6. So my idea behind knight f3 is to force the uh, c pawn to move. I'm either gonna, it's either gonna have to be moved now or uh, to prevent knight d4, or I'm gonna play knight d4 and force it up to c5 anyway. Uh, remember, um, Black's biggest trump was his control over c5, and if the pawn gets pushed to c5, suddenly that square can no longer be utilized. And as an added bonus, the range of uh, Black Stark Square Bishop would be limited, while the the bishop on g2 will have an ex extended range. Um, so Jude decided to play c5 right away. Um, and now that the knight has served its purpose on f3, I just retreated it to d2. Um, so I can try to trade off for one of Black's knights uh, with knight e4. Uh, so queen d6. Um, not too much to be said about that. Knight e4. Knight takes e4. Bishop takes e4. Um, so uh, Jude played g6, but maybe better was f5. Um, putting the question to the e4 bishop right away. Uh, it can be a scary move to play, weakening the uh, a2 g8 diagonal. Um, but the c4 pawn kind of plugs that hole to begin with, so it's not something to really worry about. Um, so, but you just played g6. Uh, so I went rook d1, gaining a tempo on the queen. Queen c7. And now I just went rook ab1. Um, so I may have saved tempi earlier if I had played rook ab1 to begin with, but uh, since I gained a tempo on the, the queen on d6, it, it's kind of a moot point. Uh, rook b8. So I played um, rook takes b8. Um, during the game, I was trying to calculate if I could win with uh, rook takes d7. Uh, then after queen uh, rook takes b1, queen takes b1, queen d7, queen b8, bishop f8, um, and then something like bishop e5. Um, but that I couldn't work that out in my head uh, over the board. Um, but the computer says uh, that bishop c6 here um, would be dr would be somewhat equal, but um, and I saw this over the board, but of course I didn't want to have an equal position. Um, and alternately, uh, bishop f6 doesn't work either. Um, so the idea behind bishop e5 was just to try to go bishop d6. Uh, so, but because he has queen d1 check, it, it doesn't work at all, so it's unfortunate. Uh, it would have been a cool move if it did. Um, so instead, uh, I just played rook takes b8, queen takes b8. And now, um, what would like to create a battery on this, this wide open diagonal here, um, by moving the bishop and putting the, the queen on c3. Um, but it's difficult right now because bishop f6 uh, could be threatened. Um, my move queen a4 doesn't really stop that, um, as I already had a threat of uh, rook takes d7. So, so if I go bishop a1 here, uh, for example, and he goes bishop f6, suddenly he's losing because of uh, rook takes d7. Well, he's losing more, hopefully. Uh, I guess I have that backwards. Oh, I maybe I go to bishop b2. Anyway, I could improve the position of my, my bishop in this position. Um, anyway, so what did I... I played queen a4, which... It gains the tempo on the knight, true. Um, but it kind of puts the queen on an awkward square. Because it, it can no longer really uh, go over to the queen side. Or to the king side, I mean. Uh, so better if I would have just played uh, f4, and then if he goes bishop f6, then the rook d7 stuff works. Um, but after f4, it's going to be it's going to start getting difficult to find moves for black. So, um, 
but I just went queen a4, and then he played uh, knight to f6. Uh, hitting my hitting my bishop. Um, if instead of knight f6 he just went bishop f6 right away, uh, then I would have to do something like bishop e1 to preserve the bishop pair, and then knight e5, uh, f4, and then like queen a3, and it's starting to get kind of awkward for white. Um, I would still say white's better because of the two bishops, and um, eventually they should shine. Um, but, but it's starting to get kind of awkward to defend, well, to, to make the bishops work. Uh, so after knight f6, I just went bishop f3. Um, so one, one kind of cool thing is that whenever a knight attacks a bishop like that, um, I always like to retreat the bishop so it dominates the knight if it tries to move forward again, or whichever direction I want to stop it. So uh, notice now that the knight cannot move forward, uh, because the bishop uh, is kind of taking over that. Um, he could go knight h5, but I think bishop h5, pawn... Pawn h5 is going to have a devastating consequences. So, um, so kind of keep that in mind when the when the bishop is uh, two squares away like this, uh, the bishop dominates the knight. Okay, so uh, now Jude kind of went a little bit crazy. Um, I could see that he was frustrated with his position, um, and to be fair, it's difficult to find any decent plan for Black. Um, but it might have been better just to kind of sit on the position for a little while um, instead of playing uh, crazy moves like g5. Uh, so I went queen a1, um, just completely dominating this uh, the long diagonal and putting a question to the knight on f6, which now can't move forward at all, so it has to go backwards. Uh, knight d7. And now I wanted to put a question to the knight again, so I went bishop c6. Um, and basically I'm trying to pry defenders away from the dark squares, uh, mainly this, this f6 square. Uh, so he goes queen c8, which is a good move. And now, um, I wasn't, I spent a good chunk of my time here trying to decide whether I should take the knight or go for some crazy attacking ideas. Uh, so for example, if I go bishop h8 here, um, then he could go bishop f8, then bishop d7, rook d7, and now queen e5. And this is my plan, but it falls into a perpetual check. So queen d1, king g2, and now f4. And there's no way for me to get out of um, perpetual check. So I, I couldn't let that happen. Um, so if we go back, instead if I try bishop d7, rook d7, rook d7, and now bishop h8, uh, bishop f8, and there's not, there's not a whole lot that I'm doing. Uh, it's kind of the same, same problem. Maybe something like bishop f6, but white's not really getting anywhere, and it, it's probably going to peter out to a draw here. So instead of doing either of those things, I decided I'm just going to retreat my bishop, so I just went bishop e4. Um, which which was okay, um, I don't know. I, I think bishop f4 is, or bishop e4 is the, the best move in the position. Um, so he just went f5, which uh, still going a little bit crazy, bishop g2, uh, and now he went h5. And black is beginning to overextend. Um, he's he was getting he was getting really close to overextending before, but now it's almost to that point. Um, my plan from the beginning was to uh, play the game kind of like this, methodical positional play, and it's given me a strong edge, and it's also made Jude start playing desperate moves. Uh, so now I played e4, which I think is a really, a really strong move because it it opens lines uh, for my bishops. Uh, and it opens lines, especially the g-file, is likely to open in this position. Uh, so either the g-file is going to open or uh, one of these diagonals is going to open, which uh, is going to be really good for me. Uh, so he played f4, um, and just as an example, if he doesn't play f4, <coughs> uh, let's say if he goes queen f8, 
Uh, then I can play pawn takes pawn. And if queen takes, suddenly this diagonal is open. So I should be able to find a way to utilize that somehow. Um, and I I don't really know how to do it right now, but maybe something like just rook e1 followed by uh, bishop e4. And suddenly black's king is going to be in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> uh, so, so after f4, uh, I played g takes f4. Um, alternately, I could have tried e5, but I don't want to shut out my domination of that long square diag, that long dark square diagonal. Uh, g takes f4, and now the important move bishop f3. So now this g file is going to maintain, be maintained open, and now my bishop has uh, pressure on h5. And if the h pawn moves, then uh, g4 is going to be is going to be weak. So, uh, so he went h4, and now after king h1, suddenly black's king is completely naked and is in huge trouble. Uh, so Jude tried queen d8, uh, but after uh, after rook g1, um, the move order is not too important. Um, I could go bishop g4, um, something like this, and it's got, starting to get really, really ugly for black. <coughs> Um, alternately, bishop h5, um, and we can see that it's getting really, really bad. Now there's mate, and this bishop is on pre. Um, so I played rook g1 instead, so he goes bishop g5. And now it's starting to get a little bit difficult for um, white's attack to continue. It's not obvious how to keep it going. Um, the right plan is to bring the queen over and do something like this. Um, but instead I just went bishop g4. Um, and now Jude found a nice resource, knight f8. Uh, then I went bishop e5, uh, putting more pressure on, on this f-pawn. Uh, king h7. And now here I started to lose the threat of the attack. I, I kept worrying about black's imminent trades and uh, counter chances if, if the queen finds uh, an opportunity to come into d2. So, um, but if I continue with the pressure I could play something like queen a3 uh, then maybe knight d7 protecting the c5 pawn. Uh, bishop a1 and now uh, queen h3 is a nice move. Sorry, the, the graphics on that were kind of ugly. So queen h3, and the power of my bishops are really amazing here. So knight f8, and now queen c3. So the queen kind of ping-pongs back and forth, uh, back and forth, uh, and all it does is it forces this e-pawn forward. Uh, and after bishop f5, queen takes, suddenly I have a, a really good ending with this, this passed e-pawn, which should uh, help me win this. Uh, but instead of that, I played rook to d1, um, which just trades down into a, another ending. Uh, so rook d7, rook takes d7, rook takes, now queen d1. And the winning plan here for white was really obvious to me. Um, I ended up playing it kind of sloppily, but um, white's position was so dominating it, there, there's room for those kind of mistakes. Uh, so queen d1. And even though the material's even here, the the bishops are just going to completely dominate these uh, scattered black pawns. Uh, so king g6, uh, bishop a4. Um, I could just win the the d pawn right or the c pawn right away with bishop d6, um, bishop a4, bishop f6, uh, bishop d6. And I'm just going to play through it kind of quickly. And now, I mean, as you can see, this pawn is just running up the board. This pawn is hanging, and this pawn is going to be passed. It was just too difficult for black to maintain any kind of uh, defense. And Jude finally resigned here, um, down a piece, and that A pawn is going to queen as well. So um, that was my first round game from the 2014 DCC Championships. Um, 
and my first game of the year 2014. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.